Um, and again, I showed you the data for white blood cell count. This is data for interleukin-6, which is a very modest predictor. But the reason why CRP is getting a lot of attention is if you look at the, the bottom quartile here divided in quarters, and the bottom two quartiles versus the top two quartiles of CRP, you can see it as much as a fourfold difference uh, in relative risk of, of um, subsequent coronary vascular disease. Um, so again, this is a, appears to be a robust biomarker uh, and uh, therefore it's receiving a lot of attention. <clears throat> now I mentioned that there is no drug that safely reduces CRP and somebody would raise their hand and say, yeah, but statins reduce CRP, and that is true. Uh, the modern statins, uh, including this one called rosuvastatin, um, will, in people who have relatively high CRP values, reduce it by 20 to 30 percent, uh, typically. And to assess the, 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 if lowering CRP with a drug will reduce heart attack risk, um, one of the major proponents of CRP as a biomarker, Dr. Paul Ritker at Harvard, designed this study, and this is a massive study, they recruited 17,000 people uh, who never had a heart attack. So this would be a primary prevention study, whereas the Leon Diet Heart Study was a secondary prevention study. It takes a lot, to, you have to treat a lot more people who haven't had coronary disease to prevent a, an event than if you do a secondary prevention study. So a very massive study. They recruited people with relatively low LDL cholesterols, under 130, and people with relatively high CRPs, above 2.0. Um, and they treated them with either the drug or placebo, so it was a two-arm randomized controlled trial. And the, the primary endpoint was the first major cardiovascular event. Uh, and they halted the study after 1.9 years when they found a relative risk for the people on the statin group of 0.556. And that was highly statistically significant. But since in this primary prevention population, coronary events are rare, they only prevented a small number of coronary events. But, they got, but it was a significant result, and they stopped the study, and they said, see, um, lowering CRP is, is useful. The problem is that in addition to, although the LDL cholesterol was relatively low in this population, they were selected for that trait, they dropped LDL by about 50%. And so the, the LDL protagonists, the people who say LDL is the most important, say, look, you went from low to even lower, and that pre prevented the heart attacks. It wasn't the, the CRP. So this is, you, you can't attribute causality for the study. Um, uh, but again, it, it appeared that, that even with people, people with high CRPs and moderate LDLs, giving them a statin was beneficial to their health. That was published in 2008. Uh, in 2012, it, four years later, they published a, 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 a follow-up study from the same study saying, oh, by the way, there was a 28% increase in the incidence of type 2 diabetes in the people who got the statin which essentially wipes out most of the, the benefit. And you would have to wonder, why did they wait four years? And if you're a conspiracy theorist, you would say, oh, they held it back. I, as somebody who spent quite a bit of my career trying to convince editors to publish you know, provocative results, it may be that it they, they, they took four years because they couldn't get it published because the editors said, oh, we, you know, there's something wrong with this study if, if, a, if a healthy drug like a statin is actually causing diabetes. Um, we haven't resolved that question, um, but I would point that out. So Ridker was kind of frustrated by that, so he said, well, what else, what else can I do to lower CRP? And it turns out there's a modern class of drugs called monoclonal antibodies, and one of them called canakinumab is a monoclonal antibody that when you inject it into people, it uh, reduces blood levels of one of the in inflammation mediators called IL-1 beta. And IL-1 beta produced in the periphery, when it circulates through the blood and goes to the liver, it prevents the liver or reduces the liver's production of CRP. So it's basically indirectly an anti-CRP drug. And so they gave this canakinumab drug to people for four years versus placebo. So people are either injecting the real stuff or injecting placebo. And they monitored them for four years. And at the end of four years, they found was that, that the relative risk of, of coronary disease getting the uh, for the people getting the canakinumab, um, uh, the relative risk was in the point um, uh, 93 to point 80, so a, a very modest reduction in coronary risk, but it was statistically significant. 
Uh, and at the same time, CRP was reduced in the 25 to 30 to 40 percent range, similar to the amount of reduction in CRP that you get with, with a relatively high dose statin. Uh, and so this is clear evidence that reducing inflammation can have a very modest effect on coronary risk. But then at the, at the bottom of the results section, they said, oh, by the way, uh, using canakinumab was associated with an increase in fatal sepsis, that is, infection. And so what's happening here is because these are not biomarkers of inflammation, these are mediators of inflammation, and inflammation is a critical component of our defense against infection, our ability to heal wounds, uh, and defend ourselves from, from, from uh, internal damage and external attack, that when you unilaterally bring down, markedly bring down one of these, these bioactive compounds, you may expose the body to to significant risk. And so actually there was no reduction in, in total mortality in this study. Uh, so it was an academic tour de force but had no clinical relevance. How about nutrients? And we've all heard of anti-inflammatory nutrients and uh, probably the one most touted anti-inflammatory nutrient in the last uh, 40 years or so is fish oil, the omega-3 fats, uh, uh, either as from fish or a uh, fermentation product, pure fermentation product uh, of the same class called DHA. There are other fatty acids such as uh, gamma linolenic acid, which has anti-inflammatory properties. Then there's this compound found in red wine called res resveratrol, um, and it's a polyphenol compound, and I like to point out, yeah, but of the polyphenols in red wine, only 2% typically is resveratrol, and there are a whole bunch of others. So people who are selling you purified resveratrol are selling you a very minor component of what might be beneficial in red wine. Uh, be careful of isolated nutrients because these are highly refined nutrients. When you have a single nutrient and you say, oh, take this single nutrient and it'll be potent, realize that that's a highly refined product. It's not naturally occurring in food. Uh, there are some uh, compounds that do have potent anti-inflammatory effects. You know, we were in our dis debate yesterday, the topic of vitamin E was brought up and the fact that vitamin E appears to be uh, very ineffective in reducing coronary risk in, in many studies where, where it's been utilized. But the vitamin E that everybody talks about is alpha tocopherol. It's, but when you look in real food, the uh, vitamin E is a minor component of the tocopherols because there are many of them found in foods. Uh, and gamma tocopherol, which is the most common version of tocopherol found in foods, is a potent anti-inflammatory agent. And again, I have no financial interest in this, but I actually have, there are two issued patents with my name on them using gamma tocopherol, the lower CRP, and it's a very potent reducer of CRP. And you've never heard of that because the, the startup company in which we did that work went bankrupt because this was not the droid we were looking for. They sold the patents to a major uh, American pharmaceutical company, and they've paid the, the duties on those patents for the last 20 years. And the reason is that that company sells two products in the United States called uh, Motrin and Tylenol. And two existing, nowhere near as potent or effective anti-inflammatory agents, but they have a big market, so they're defending their market for this. Again, no conspiracy here, just it's part of business.